We live in a world we think we understand. Matter, space, energy, time. We see ourselves as physical beings moving through a physical universe governed by physical laws. But look closer, and this picture starts to dissolve. Quantum physics tells us particles are not tiny, solid things. They are waves of probability, collapsed into reality only when measured. Black hole physics tells us that matter's deepest description isn't mass, but information encoded on a surface. Computer science and cosmology now converge on a stunning possibility, that the universe is not, at its root, a material machine, but an informational process. John Wheeler's famous phrase, it from bit, captures this shift, that all things, all its, arise from informational yes-no events, bits. But if that's true, what are we? Could consciousness itself be the great reader, processor or participant in this cosmic data field? This is not just physics. It's a revolution in how we understand mind, meaning, and what it means to exist. John Archibald Wheeler was one of the great physicists of the 20th century, known for his work on black holes and quantum theory. But late in life, Wheeler proposed something extraordinary. Looking at how the quantum world behaves, how particles exist as probabilities until observed, he suggested that information is the true foundation of reality. Not matter, not energy, information. Every quantum interaction, he said, is like a tiny yes-no a bit, creating the events we call real. From these endless, cascading yes-no questions, the universe builds up stars, atoms, planets, minds. This was his vision, it from bit. Wheeler saw reality as participatory. It comes into being not passively, but through interactions, measurements, observations. The universe isn't a fixed stage. It's an unfolding informational process brought to life through the interplay of potential and participation. But if reality is informational, then an even deeper question appears. What reads the information? Quantum physics is not just weird, it's deeply relational. Quantum systems don't carry absolute isolated properties. Instead, they are defined by how they relate to other systems. Entangled particles are the most famous example. Measure one here, and you instantly know something about its partner over there, no matter the distance. But this is not just a spooky curiosity. It points to a universe fundamentally woven out of relations, correlations, information. Modern physicists now suggest that space itself, the distances between things, emerges from underlying networks of quantum entanglement. In this picture, the stuff of the world is not solid, but patterned. You are not a sealed-off entity. You are a node in a vast web of informational connections, extending across time, space, and matter. Every thought you have, every breath you take, every particle in your body is part of this cosmic informational network. You are not standing on reality. You are woven into it. The discovery that black holes encode their contents on their surfaces sparked a revolution called the holographic principle. This theory suggests that all the information about a region of space can be described by data on its boundary, just as a hologram encodes a 3D image on a 2D surface. This means the entire universe may be like a hologram, three-dimensional experience emerging from two-dimensional information. Think about that. Every chair, tree, cloud, person. Not fundamental matter, but emergent pattern, like the picture on a screen made of pixels. From this angle, we are living in a reality where information is more fundamental than space itself. And the deeper you look, the more you realize this is not about reducing the universe to mere code. It's about realizing that what we call physical is already an expression of patterned meaning. But that meaning is not just floating there. It's waiting to be interpreted, processed, known, which brings us to consciousness. If the universe is built from information, the next question is, who or what is reading it? Information only exists as difference, as meaning, as relation. But meaning for whom? This is where some thinkers suggest consciousness is not a late-stage product of evolution, but a fundamental layer of reality. In panpsychism, for example, every particle, every system, carries a spark of experience. In idealist philosophy, thinkers like Bernardo Castro propose that all matter is modulation within universal consciousness. A vast, unified mind dreaming itself into countless forms. From this perspective, 
Consciousness is not inside the brain. The brain is inside consciousness. You are not a machine processing inputs. You are a local expression of the cosmos knowing itself. You are awareness, moving through a world of patterned information, tasting it, shaping it, transforming it. Matter meaning mind, all three, deeply entangled. Long before quantum physics, mystical tradition spoke of a cosmic informational field. In Hindu and Buddhist philosophy, Akasha is the primal substance, the etheric medium out of which all things emerge and into which all things return. The Akashic record is often described as the subtle memory of the universe. Every event, thought, action and intention recorded in the field of being. This is not a dusty archive, it's a living tapestry, shimmering with meaning. What's remarkable is how this ancient intuition echoes modern scientific ideas. From the holographic universe to black hole entropy. From quantum entanglement to cosmic memory. Could it be that, in different languages, mystics and physicists are pointing toward the same truth? That reality is a living record, not dead matter. And that consciousness is how the universe reads and writes itself. What does this mean for you right now, sitting wherever you are? It means you are not an object. You are a process, a pattern, a dance of information. Your body is a swirl of atoms. Your thoughts a flow of sensations. Your identity a shifting web of memories. You are not a fixed thing. You are an unfolding song, a ripple in the informational sea of existence. Neuroscience already shows us that the self is dynamic, plastic, ever-changing. Physics suggests that matter itself is emergent, but at the intersection of science and spirit a deeper realization appears that you are not just alive in the universe, you are a local note in the universe's song of itself, and perhaps death is not the erasure of the pattern, but its transformation, not an end, but a reweaving into the larger whole. To see yourself as a pattern, not a particle, is to experience a profound shift. You are no longer trapped in a small, solid, isolated self. You are revealed as a temporary crystallization of universal processes. This can be terrifying, but also deeply freeing. It means you are connected to everything, from the quantum foam beneath your cells, to the gravitational waves rippling across galaxies. It means meaning is not an add-on, it's woven into reality. It means consciousness is not a glitch, it's the way the universe feels its own patterns. In this view, love, creativity, suffering, joy, they are not private quirks. They are the universe touching, moving, knowing itself through you, and that changes everything. What if you are not a thing in the universe, but the universe coded and decoding itself as you? What if matter is not primary, but meaning is? What if mind is not a side effect, but the light in which reality shimmers into being? We are on the edge of a profound revolution, one that science, philosophy and mysticism are all circling toward, the idea that reality is informational, relational, participatory, and that we are part of its great unfolding. If this touched something in you, share your reflections in the comments. Have you ever sensed yourself as more than a body, as a wave, a pattern, a pulse of the whole? And if you're ready to keep exploring the mystery of consciousness and cosmos, subscribe because you are not just in the universe you are the living code and the universe is waking up as you